I like staring at things. I like the quiet flow of the river. I like the distant sound of the rapids, the morning birds and the sun. And I'm feeling a bit better than I was yesterday. I, uh, I'm not very good at handling anger and disappointment, I don't think. In fact, I don't think I'm very good at handling any emotions. Perhaps that's why I'm in the position that I'm in. But I want to be very clear that when I say I'm not very good at it, it's not to say that I suck at it. Um, it is to say that uh, the dimensions of my personality do not permit me to ever forget how disappointing people are to me <laughs> and how disappointing everyone has been to me not everyone but you know what I mean a lot of people and uh, and that disappointment has really really gotten into me you know, it's really gotten into my personality again and how do I experience life so that every disappointment that I get reminds me of all the disappointment I've ever had because people disappoint me so much and I don't think they should or I don't think they should have to and uh, it's, it's not an enjoyable career if you choose to be someone who's uh, a disaffected person in, in all of their way that they live their life. And I understand that that, that pretty much describes me. Uh, disaffected. And that word is, I think, a very strong word because I don't seem to have a lot of effect on other people. And again, for the most part, I'm actually pretty glad of that. I don't think I have much of an influence over anyone. I don't think I've ever had an influence over anyone. And I think any positive influence anyone would say that I've had over them was probably because they were getting something out of me that wasn't really very good for me. You know, let's just take the viewer as an example. Let's assume that you had a relatively good childhood. I'm not, I'm not going to make a video saying that you didn't, although I alluded to as much almost all the time, and it's not personal, so please don't take it that way. But it's extremely personal, you know. Um, if if you encounter someone who is perpetually disaffected and uses the power of their own inner wrath to peer into all of the failings of society as a sort of moral obligation he's decide, he's placed upon himself because he doesn't have anything else to do and you can read as much of that as much into that as you like but just understand you're not necessarily going to impress me by doing that you'll probably disappoint me by doing that because I think that what I have to say is worth more than that. And that's the right that I have. And someone else has the right to say that I don't. And that's not what this video is about necessarily. But as I go on in my videos and i self-aware, you know, my emotions and stuff, I, uh, I find I don't mind um, looking at different ways of, you know, interpreting what I'm saying. I think 99% uh, of professional counselors would say I'm just letting out verbal diarrhea, uh, angst, fear. Um, unmet needs, um, sexual frustration, and they would have a, a ready list of things that I should probably do to improve my life. Get a job, cut your hair, set a goal, make your bed, you know, it just makes me want to fucking shoot myself. And maybe that advice would be good for some people, um, but uh, I think you can guess from my tone that 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 doesn't really apply to me because uh, I've been sobered by by things that uh, you know that change the way you you think and look at, and uh, see things and when I you know see people who are doing a job because it's just a job or people who don't really have a genuine interest in people, but they deal with people anyway, you know, which is a lot of people in retail. Um, you know, I pick up on that. And uh, I make a career out of it in a way.
So yeah, no, I don't. I don't think I've ever influenced anyone. Um, I've mentioned this in other videos. I almost take a little bit of pride in it, and I know that there's always someone who will say, "You just choose to experience the things that you do, and you create your own reality." And we hate those people here on the Rain Griffin Channel. We hate those people because they have no moral reasoning. So you get, you have an idea of how much I comprehend in my distaste for my fellow man. So I've made myself clear. I may not be optimistic and buoyant and joyful and cheerful or even entertaining, but I have to some degree made myself clear. I hope one can extend at least that much to me. But I wonder, you know, I wonder how much more could be clear to us all if we all made a little more effort to be disappointed. Now, no one ever encourages you to be disappointed. I'm disappointed. And if something's well appointed, right, what is it? It's kind of set up kind of right. If you've got your car all well appointed, if a woman or a man is well appointed, it means like they've kind of look like they've got it together. Emphasis on look, right? But life always falls apart, as William Butler Yeats pointed out. Things fall apart. Right? The world does fall apart. You see all these beautiful stones? Right? You could call this their graveyard. Like broken bones, isn't it? But they play a perfect part in the river. I've learned enough about nature to know that everything has a purpose, even if I don't know what it is. If I could only apply that to the rest of my life, I dare say I'd probably feel a little less like killing myself. That's some plantain over here I'm going to use. In a minute. So again, I notice in my interpersonal interactions that I do not have a lot of influence over other people, except maybe teenage girls. That's about it, which is no offense to them at all. I mean, I respect them, which is probably why they respect me. And uh, it's nice. Uh, I think it does them credit um, that they appreciate. Uh, most people that I've met that are sensible people have said that I, I seem a very responsible person. And women have told me that they, f they feel they can trust me. I only wish I could trust them most of the time. And you'd be right in saying that uh, if I can't trust them, then maybe they shouldn't be trusting me. And maybe we shouldn't be trusting each other. Um, hence the predicament I find myself in, or the choice that I've made is to stay away from people altogether. Because I can't trust them. You know, how many people do you know will put up a video saying, I just don't trust people? You know, um, a lot of the pile of mental health issues kind of will will creep up when if you're if you're listening to someone saying something like that, I mean a sensible person has to think mental health issues and you're right. You're listening to a part of my mind. You're listening to a part of actually billions of people's minds. Who every day give evidence through their own body language that they don't trust probably many most people. Why else would people live the way they do? It's all based on distrust. It's all an insurance policy against the day when people finally start fucking coming out of prison and acting like fucking apes again. Because the insinuation of society is that that's what we are, right? That we'd be just fucking cavemen raping each other if we had half a chance. That down deep, buried in our psyche, we just want to fuck, 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 eat babies and fuck, eat the babies and fuck and fuck. And the Anastasia books by Vladimir Gray, I think it's The Space of Love, book four. Yes, there's a reason why I know that. It's because I was obsessed with these books for a while. And... Uh, something happens to the not nice people. It's a sort of an orthodox Christian take on the new age. With so I think some fairly genuine folk wisdom put in there. So I mean it's worth a worth a look. I think I'd be being dishonorable if I said it's not worth a look. Um, but Anastasia doesn't exist. And it's like a Jesus figure, right, that he's set up. But he makes you wonder if she exists. And if something feels good, if someone says, love is wonderful, and love is a spirit that lives by this river, and you would say, oh, I feel that, that exists, right? And it's like, well, if you're saying that love is a person, walk around this river that you can only see if you're in the right state of mind, and no, they don't exist. And quite frankly, it, in terms of what I need, this river hasn't got what I need. And it knows that. And you won't find a lot of nature channels that'll tell you that. Look at this beautiful river. I still want to fucking kill myself. You think a river with some nice fucking stones and a sunny day fucking blows my hair back completely for the rest of my life? It doesn't. It's nice, though. But 
you would have noticed that a lot of things are nice. And it takes a lot of nice things to, to make up a day or a life. It takes up a constellation of things. And many people have constellations of happiness in their lives. And, uh, and maybe that doesn't create happiness in other people's lives, as a hypothetical. Um, are they responsible for that? Are they genuinely happy? If people were genuinely happy, would people suffer less? These are good philosophical questions to ask, and I think our flesh and blood, we kind of wander around making those kinds of interrogations, don't we? Are people really happy? Hard to say. I think there are people that are happy today. I think I've been happy sometimes. I'm happier today than I was yesterday. And hopefully I'll be happier tomorrow than I was today. I'm not feeling well. Uh, you'll notice going back a few videos, I did some ceremony at the Little Qualicum River. And I did a massive heart uh, ceremony. And I was of the understanding it would take about two weeks for that to, to recover. And uh, I've been in a lot of self-imposed hermitage, even more than usual, which I think is why my temper has been so foul, because I just feel like I want the world to leave me alone. I don't want to go shopping. I don't want to see people. I'm fucking sick of the little TV that I bothered looking at. I think the only thing I can watch on TV is MASH. It's the only fucking show that doesn't fuck with my brain, even though it still is in its own way propaganda. It just wasn't as advanced, you know, because... You know, people actually probably were in a very different state of mind when, when MASH came out. Right? It didn't need to be so invasive propaganda. They just needed to laugh and they needed to feel as though the wars that they were in had some redeeming value. At the same time, they needed to see characters be totally disappointed and make jokes about how wholly useless it was and how inefficient the military was and how, you know, nobody seemed really all that good at what they were doing. But the only people that were probably lived in MASH 4077. Or visited there from time to time. So it was a core group of competent people in an awful situation. And, you know, it's not like it didn't appeal to the emotional profile of the viewer then and now. And it does. It does it quite well. But if it encourages you to ask questions about the nature of organized warfare, and indeed, as a subject, how it bleeds into everything that you call culture, education, and medicine, and even language, brain function, your sexual, emotional, and mental development and what it means to various people in different very powerful spheres of finance and government and science and ultimately aristocracy which exists today even stronger than it ever was then the question as to the nature of organized warfare becomes a better one and the the dearth of answers more prominent when we have no explanation for organized warfare for something so violent um, and so presumably imperative like a vaccine um, there seems very little interest in how it all comes about and whether or not it's actually all that effective. Um, how much people could be convinced and does it matter at this point to engage in mental warfare, emotional warfare, the belief in warfare. Um, war is a god. War is a god. You know, that uh, we're trained to worship. So that uh, we 
we don't really find the answers to the questions of how organized warfare all comes about because it's a way of life. War is a way of life, and we teach our children to live in a state of war. Right? So you take the wars, the kinetic wars, you take the, the millions of people killed, the millions, hundreds of millions, marshaled, the industry, the families, the, the, the labor, the money, the illness, the debt, the depression, everything. Think about it. None of it needed to happen. All arbitrary. Follow me here. Right? Stay with me. Stay with me, because it's easy to lose consciousness when you talk about it. You take that, and then you can engineer an entire society out of that result. It's a cause and effect. It's the great mover. And when I've looked into Hinduism, and I've looked into just basic but primary concepts in Hinduism and Christianity and Buddhism, it's all related to mobilizing large-scale warfare in the mind with the flesh and blood. It goes against our nature in every way. Right? It'd be like all the religions in the world as a, as a, as a, as a sentence would be like taking a sentence that is actually coherent, chopping off half the words and mixing up the letters in all the others. You know, it's still got something in it but it's, you're never going to grow your brain using it. It's all religion, all culture in the world. It's like television. You know? You've got um, shows on TV now that I've noticed in my experiments where people get married after they've known each other for like 7 to 14 days. And then on the show you have voiceovers where the characters, which are probably actors, are telling you what marriage requires. Not that marriage fucking in itself has ever been that good a thing anyway. But the idea of a committed relationship, or a relationship from which children could be born, and this is the main consideration. And if marriage does it for you, as far as that's concerned, fine. But I, for me, I refuse to believe that. But do you see how far they've come in breaking apart the family? That's warfare. And you can pay actors to do anything. You can pay pretty people, especially, to do fucking anything. That's what Hollywood's for. You can pay pretty people to do fucking anything. And if you, they'll even tell you, I think Bruno had like, when he did his, one of his satirical shows, he, he was interviewing uh, mothers and fathers of small children and what they would allow their small children to do for money. And it was like anything. Yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that, we'll do that. And uh, this is the mentality of the actors that you pay to go see. Their families, like they'll do anything for money. They'll do anything for money. I can't say that enough. They'll do anything for money. Look at the money they get. You get that kind of money because they'll do anything for money. It takes a man of great courage to see outside of his village. To see his village in a less providential light. The better to bring more light to the village. If a people become cold and heartless, and I am every bit as cold and heartless in many ways as I have been treated by a cold and heartless world, and my anger, my vitriol, my uh, disappointment has gone so far that it is very hard for me to even be satisfied giving vent to it, because it's all that I end up doing is just spewing out everything I dislike and making arguments along the way because I have to I'm still sketching out the territory I don't even quite know how to approach it it's a very great work that I'm about the business of so that I can have a robust philosophy but you have to have a philosophy that gives uh, adequate consideration for what's actually happened to people because most people are just coping they're just coping their whole lives are just coping I've seen people at birth, I've seen children of different ages, I've seen people, elders pass away and what's in their minds, how they behave, right? Very early ages and at very old ages, all through the life, having a lot of difficulty, right, with their emotional development 
and with their capacity for moral reasoning, for feeling strong and safe and comfortable in the world. Strong and safe and comfortable in the world, right? Every day, right? If you don't wake up and go to sleep feeling strong and comfortable and safe in the world, then something's wrong. And you know that it's wrong. And I have felt that way my whole life, ever since I was a kid, ever since being in my mother's womb. You don't tell that person to just feel better. You don't tell them everything's going to be okay, because it's not. Not now. Maybe next week. Catch me in a month or so, and I'll tell you how this went. Very disappointed in people. A lot of the culture around me. Even, like, I think if you're kind of like me and you're kind of a West Coast hippie-ish type of person, you think, well, there's a few segments of the population that still are moving in a better direction, you know, like people kind of like having, you know, earth-based companies and this type of thing, right? Earth-based restaurants, organic, gluten-free restaurants and stuff. And I'm, you know, I haven't seen any I like. It seems to me they're even more freaky than the average restaurant, you know, because they haven't really thought it all through, you know? Give me the person who's thought it all through, and I'll, I'll tell you what you'll have. Here's my idea for a restaurant. I've had it for years. Now, follow me clearly, because it's very complicated. A restaurant that gives food away by donation and makes sure that any homeless people have three excellent organic hot meals a day. You come, you eat good food, and if you're just so disposed and you liked it, you can leave any amount of money that you like, or none at all. And that's it. End of story. And you look for donations from farms who want their food to reach its absolute highest level of vibration because the food of nature is meant to be free. When I lived on Salt Spring, I used to collect food from local businesses, organic food, breads, and just give them away. Sometimes I'd put a lot of time in making meals and give them away to, hom to homeless people. Once a week, that's all I could do. And I would have a little bit extra for myself because I was living at the poverty level. Although I didn't feel like it, I really enjoyed my time there. And some of the good friends that I made at the time, they were very similarly inclined. And that's when I learned that food isn't supposed to be bought and sold. Something actually the Anastasia books touch on, which I found very appealing. Why we involve money in food. And you might say, well, why wouldn't you involve money in food? People have to make a living. And say, look how deeply that's ingrained. Right? Don't see this as like some weird dude who wants to impose some completely impractical uh, system of living upon unsuspecting victims. Okay? okay? That's what's happened to you. <laughs> what I'm suggesting is that you take the opportunity, you being anyone, uh, all of us, we take the opportunity... Uh, to think about a way of living where we don't buy and sell food. You know, if it takes a little effort that, you know, I thought we lived in this spirit of like, if something is hard, that doesn't mean we don't do it. I seem to recall seeing that somewhere, something about the American spirit or something. Something is hard doesn't mean we don't do it. Could we have another corollary of that? It's just because something doesn't involve making a profit, that doesn't mean we don't think about doing it. Nothing I do has a profit. I've made 3,000 videos, and I sit here, and you say, let's, you know, if you watch the first few videos, right, and you think, oh, wow, these are pretty inspiring. Go back and see some of my earlier work before I was, before I had a YouTube channel. And, uh, and then you come to this video and be like, oh, fuck. And, you know, I don't want to follow that guy. Where the fuck is he going? You know, he just seems to get more depressed. He's got some vagus nerve issue, which is, is related to the word vague and vagary and vagabond. 
and it's just moving around. It's like a generalized fucking, holy fuck, this world sucks. This moves around my body. It's like, I can't even, it's like having cancer and dying without having cancer or the relief of some final death. That's what it's like. That's what it feels like. You know, a lot of cancer patients have actually benefited from just watching comedy shows, right? Just to bring your mood up. But I'm, I'm observing. My main function as my own doctor is to observe. I observe because my body is the greatest of mysteries to me. So I also consult my own oracle. And it told me that I have about today and tomorrow, but also two weeks since that ceremony at the river uh, for my system to recover from the regeneration that it's doing different you know what we call healing might just be what nature calls growth right so if you're feeling like giving your brain relaxing after listening for the last 27 minutes or so we could just say let's just say everything's about growth rain's growing we're growing i actually had someone go back and watch my videos and they wrote a comment and they said I watched your, I think it was Fractal Truth was their name, and they liked some of my earlier videos because it sounded, I guess, elaborate or something. And uh, and they said, well, I, now I see you're into hating the white race or something. And, uh, you know, good luck, that's the wrong wrong way to go. And I said, really? How is that the wrong way to go? And they never got back to me. So they're done, they can't. I know that mindset, right? Um, I know the mindset. Yeah, It's a... Uh, one, it's just not for them, but two, um, they haven't picked up enough about me to know, as I, by the way, have viewers who do, uh, that I'm going somewhere. You see, I give, I don't operate according to our culture. I give a lot of priority to my feelings, right? Kind of like the, uh, kind of like a schoolgirl that way. You know, if you look at schoolgirls, you know, when they get upset, they don't fucking make a secret about it. And I'm like that. I'm like a schoolgirl. I'm a pretty little girl. You know, and it's, I found it was one of the biggest taboos growing up as a man is being a pretty little girl. People would rather be fucking gay and have someone fuck them up the ass than be a pretty little girl and actually just allow their feelings to come out. Now, I don't mean anger because pretty little girls can be fucking little ferocious bitches because they haven't been taught and, and had their emotions actually respected because our culture doesn't do that. It's not just some freaky religions that treat people like fucking retards. It's, it's the whole culture. And if you found that you've... I like planes, but fuck you, I hate noise. Get a silencer. Blow up. Fall to the earth. I'll get it on camera and we'll make a million views. Okay, no. I was just being a little selfish there. I know I completely threw all my non-money values under the bus with that comment. And now you can no longer trust me. But, as it is, the people aboard that plane are safe. And God willing, they'll land in Nanaimo and have a nice little latte and buy a prostitute and do some other necessaries before they head home to their penthouse in Vancouver and worship some sort of <laughs> graven image of Sodom and Gomorrah. No. Go home and watch House on the Prairie and raise three tiny little children who never grow older than seven years old and end up on Ellen going, Hi, Ellen. We're very happy, even though we're never going to be old enough to drive, fuck, or vote. As it happens... None of those things are really all that fun when we have to do them with other people. <laughs> you wonder if just like people would just be honest by accident? <laughs> anyway, uh, I never, by the way, uh, as the, to the note, again, back to that person who wrote a critical comment, I, I total respect to them. You know, I, I love when people just tell me how they feel, you know, you know, and, uh, Usually if I don't like something on YouTube, I just say, fuck you, you dumb cunt. So they did pretty good. Yeah, so hats off to you, you know. And speaking of which, white people, huh? White people. They just, they can't handle whiteness. They don't want to, they don't want to see what whiteness has done to the world. It's, it's truly like being snow blind. You know, I'm starting to see what minorities say. I mean, of course, it's through the fucking mouthpiece of feminism and all the fucking weird Americanism, and it just it just gets fucked. And if you're out there and you're a minority and you think feminism fucking speaks for you, like, I'm, I'm really, my condolences. My condolences. State cults are just fucking sophisticated, and they fucking suck, and it's like fucking a spartame for the mind. 
you know, and of course it goes for vulnerable people. It fucking produces vulnerable people. All right. So, uh, but yeah, uh, mine, I don't even like the word minorities. We're all a fucking minority. Right. And then you try not to be a minority, right? Who wants to be in the minority? Let's see. Let's enumerate things that we're in the minority of. I'm probably in the minority of 44 year old men who come down to a local river that they've frequented, um, sits down on a rock, smokes a little uh, Jack Herrera, and bitches on his YouTube videos. Hey, that's a minority. Hey, we're doing pretty good. Wears salmon colored shorts, you know, most of his clothes are given to him, has probably walked more miles in these shoes than the average consumer would have walked in about five year period in a period of six months. Hey dude, you like to walk? Yeah, I guess so. Doesn't seem to be taking me anywhere though. I, uh, my health pisses me off. When I don't feel good, I get fucking pissed because I know that all of my health problems comes from being victimized and it just fucking pisses me off. It fucking pisses me off that there's no help. It fucking pisses me off that I fucking have to eke my way. By the way, the person who gave me the suggestion about mushrooms, thank you again. I know who you are, but I don't like saying people's names. I don't like my name being said by people I don't really know that well. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to try those mushrooms again. I didn't do them very long, and I think I need to eat them for a longer period of time. So we live and learn. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. It's uh, I'm going to give it this month. I think it's going somewhere. I keep observing. If any of you have ever had vagal nerve issues, you know what I mean. Depression, anxiety, hostility. Uh, but it's also a class. You know, if you've ever had your boundaries stepped on, if you've ever grown up in a war, a world that worships a god of war, and nobody's left with the time, energy, intelligence to notice what, how fucking ass backwards everything is, and even if they do, nobody's going to fucking listen. And that's fucked. So... You know, if you want to step out, call yourself a fucking shaman if you have to. Call yourself a fucking weirdo, a creep, a poor person, a visionary, whatever you need to do. But when you step out, be careful that you don't get drawn back in by the gravity of notoriety. I live by anonymity. I fucking live by anonymity. I'll say cunt as many times as I can. I'll fucking, like, fucking jerk off on camera if it'll make sure that I remain anonymous. You know, I don't care if I if I come up with the greatest wisdom and philosophy in all the fucking ages of this fucked up world. I'll fucking get on camera and jerk off to a picture of the King of England, and that'll be all done. Because, that's my way of looking at things. Right, leaving civilization to me is a one way trip, and my goal is to make it so that death isn't something that I look forward to. I'll let you know how it goes.